So here we are. Good evening. Oh, I have a, a, just a second. Uh, okay. Uh, good evening in the name of uh, Pekarna Magdalinska Mreja and uh, uh, guest room uh, Maribor um, uh, residential platform. Uh, my name is Lucia Smudish and with me today are uh, Filip Bojanc, my co-worker, and uh, Mark Ferret, who is uh, um, a resident in... Uh, we did the remote or online residency with him. Um, and this is the final presentation event. So I will make a, a sh short introduction about um, Mark and then we will um, continue with the presentation of Invisible Voice, a plugin that was developed in the last month. So um, uh, Mark Ferret is an artist, a researcher and a cultural critic uh, specialized in the intersection of the virtual and physical world and uh, the effect of new technologies on the individual and their sense of self. Uh, his work embodies hackers ethics such as privacy policies, use of surveillance technologies, data collection and protection and the critique of uh, social, legal and political models. Uh, Mark uh, graduated from Kingston University in London with a first class degree in fine art in 2014. And uh, since he has given talks and participated in several group and solo exhibitions. Uh, in 2017, he gave a TEDx talk about his uh, first two projects that data show uh, in, from 2015 and uh, poisonous antidote from 2016 and took part in the Sundance New Frontier program in 2016 uh, with his ongoing project, Project Seeing Eye, uh, that was presented also at the solo exhibition at Ars Electronica last year. And uh, uh, Mark was also selected for the European Media Artist uh, Residency Exchange uh, in 2020, and this is still uh, happening. Yeah, and he was uh, selected uh, for guest room, Maribor. <laughs> the last uh, uh, success. So, uh, um, as I said uh, today, uh, Mark will uh, um, introduce us to uh, the web plugin uh, Invisible Voice, um, uh, the second edition of, of it. And uh, but uh, maybe for the beginning, uh, uh, you could give us a, a brief introduction to to the first version of Invisible Voice that was um, uh, developed in 2017 and commissioned by the Goldsmiths University in London. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I'm Matt, I'm an artist, that was a very nice introduction. Um, thank you for that. And thank you for selecting me. It's been a joy, I should say, the, as always. Um, but yeah, so I was working on Invisible Voice, the second version during this residency, um, which was born out of the Invisible Voice done with Goldsmiths University, um, which was also a plugin, which I can show you the website of. Um, so let me just get the website up. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, yes. Cool. So if we go to Invisible Voice, oh wait. So the in original Invisible Voice website looked like this. Um, so it was a plugin that you installed on your browser. Um, and the idea was that, that it was focusing on online advertising and how, how we could protest online, a form of protest online, where it's engaging with people, where people can start to collectively come together and find a place to protest together. So the idea was by attacking online advertising and the mentality of it is that if, you, if we collectively don't go on a website, that website or company will lose money because they're not getting the advertising revenue that we are giving them. Um, so if we were all to do that to a, to a particular website or journalist or company that we all decide they lose money. So if we didn't go on Facebook, for example, for a week, everyone, Facebook would lose a lot of money. The whole, the whole model is based on 
adverts that are given to the collective of individuals of which then they take all of that money from us. Um, so the idea was that each week a different person, um, so a journalist in the Daily Mail or a, a, a disability campaigner or an environmental campaigner and different people would all write a different article each week and decide what website should be blocked and that website would be blocked from each of the browsers of anyone who's downloaded the plugin. Um, so so can I ask something, how did you choose those people or could they, um, how did you choose them? Um, so at first I approached people, at first it was me asking different people, hey can you write this, uh, I was first trying to get right wing people, then left wing people, then middle ground people, to try to kind of be apolitical with it, um, but asking people who are experts within their fields on what we should be blocking, that you know a Guardian film critic will know about films, so it's cool, let's ask her what, what she thinks is wrong within films, and then let's ask a Daily Mail journalist what they don't like, and you know, an environmental campaigner, you know, they don't like stuff. They know a lot more about the environment than I would, and what's bad for it. So it was trying to ask experts and who know things. Um, and then that did open up. This was meant to go on for a year. This project, um, I called it off after three months um, because it it became quite obvious who people were picking. Of course, the Daily Mail journalist was picking an Uber left wing thing to block. Of course, the Guardian person was picking an Uber right wing thing to block. And it kind of became a little echo chamber of ourselves. It became, you know, the critique of social media. It became that. It just became a, you, you'll, you'll feel satisfied and happy reading the critique of the thing that you like, but you won't be, feel happy about reading the one that you don't like. Um, that, so it did open up, as I say, we found a bus driver at one point who decided to block something. There was a nurse who decided to block something. Um, but even their choices, their rationale for the choices combined with what they were choosing, I didn't think added up to a good enough reason to actually be blocking it, even if you do agree with what they were choosing to block. That I, I feel that the mentality has to be right as much as the choice. And this became quite a difficult issue within the project. And, Goldsmiths weren't the happiest that I wanted to call the project off early. Um, it was commissioned as a year long project. It, it only did a quarter of that year, um, but, but we did come to the conclusion that it was right to do it because it, it became the exact opposite of what we were trying to do with it. Um, and, I, and I think there's, there's something to be said for acknowledging when a project is failing and not just carrying on for the sake of carrying it on um, but instead saying, no, this isn't working, let's stop it and let's try to rethink it or let's not try to rethink it. Um, and in the end, we decided not to rethink it um, until, until early this year. Um, and then early this year, we're, it was coronavirus, obviously, we were all in lockdown um, and Black Lives Matter protests were going on. Um, I wanted to join those Black Lives Matter protests, um, but I thought I shouldn't, um, although lots of my friends did. Um, but I thought we should be staying inside, that now wasn't necessarily the time to be protesting outside. And then so it came, brought me back to Invisible Voice and trying to think about how we could protest online again. How can we use the tools that exist to us at our disposal that at its heart is about connectivity? That connectivity is one of the most powerful tools. You throw in the knowledge of information and then suddenly I really think we have the most powerful tool and it is the most powerful tool, the internet or the World Wide Web, at our disposal. So, so then came along the idea for Invisible Voice and then the selection of Guestry Maribor for the residency and then that combination kind of then brought along Invisible Voice. Um, so Invisible Voice 2.0, as some like to call it, as I like to call it, um, but really it's Invisible Voice, I guess, um, which is taking a second to load, um, is the new version. Um, so Invisible Voice is a plugin, once again, that you install on your browser. Um, but this time, rather than blocking websites, rather than it being this opinion-based thing that someone feels that should be blocked, that, you know, why, why, why is my opinion more valid than your opinion? And that's, that's something that we've seen in the last five years, leads to quite bad negative ways, um, leads to this horrible separation. It's got to be on the individual to decide what they think is right and wrong but it's about giving the individual the right information to make those choices. Um, so that was the more of the attitude of trying to use a place to protest. Um, so this is the website. It's, it's a website, it's a plugin that will show you various information about the companies that we go on to. So let's go on, I don't know, let's go on Facebook. 
So if you go on Facebook and you have the plugin installed on your browser, the first time you go on the website, you're greeted with this pop-up. This pop-up, it shows you up here, is the headline things predominantly of Wikipedia. So if you want to know, I don't know, what their issues with censorship are, you go down to censorship and it will then tell you all the issues to do with censorship that Wikipedia has. Um, it will also show you the parent company of Facebook. It will show you the sister companies and affiliated companies of that company. It will show you who the important people are. Um, there's a little drop down thing so, which then shows you who these people are. So you don't have to bother going on to, you know, who are these names? It will show the political leaning of the company. It will show you their revenue. If we can get the value of the company, which on some companies we do, it will show you the value of the company in dollars. If not, it will then show you the revenue of the company, um, how many employees it has, the employment satisfaction of that company and the type of company it is, along with various other information. That all it will take critiques of it. Um, we're then also searching the news um, for that one's a bit broken. So then we're also searching the news to then give you more information. So if we go to, I don't know, H&M, for example, a clothes company, um, it will then also show you. Or maybe it won't. I can do it this way. Um, so if you've been on the website before, it won't pop up and this little button will appear. This little button you can move around so it doesn't block your view. And this button will only ever appear if we have information on that company. Um, so it won't appear on a different website. And then you open it and then it will show you all of the... Now, obviously with Google, there's a lot of sister companies. Um, there's lots of information on Google. So maybe this wasn't the best one to show you, but you know, it's huge amounts of information. Um, and it's a super simple idea. You know, it really is just about trying to show you information that you'd probably want to know about each website that you go on that you don't get to know that. But if you were to Google, for example, so for the Google News searches, in our searches, we're searching specifically for that company name, along with these headlines. That's controversial, it's actually cheap labor, allegations, taxes, environmental, philanthropy and sexual. That, and you'd be amazed at the amount of companies that come up when you type in company name plus cheap labor. It's incredible, but of course we don't do that when we buy something from H&M or Zara or whoever it is. That, so if you were to go into Zara, that pop up appears, then you see that this is the company who own it. It's not really Zara. These are some of the other companies that they own. This is the guy. Um, and then you'd start to see some of the things that come up. So sexual things are coming up with the etiquette at Zara. That, I don't know, various other things. And this happens for each company. Um, and yeah, I don't know, there's not really too much to say about Invisible Voice beyond this, in the sense that it is trying to be apolitical. There is of course politics involved in the choices of things that we're showing. Um, there is of course then a lot of things like you know, you do want to know the political side of some things. So we are first looking on that. You do want to know the political leaning of lots of companies that you go on. Um, one of the important things that we focused on getting in terms of the list of companies that we're showing. So at the moment, we've got four or 500 companies on Invisible Voice. Um, this is being updated each day um, over the next week that Philip and I went through quite a long list with a little bit of help from me as well. Um, went through a really long list of two and a half thousand companies yesterday that we were adding to it, along with another list of 500 the day before. Um, the key aspect of that was also looking for conspiracy theory websites. That So there will be lots of conspiracy theory websites where you will get to see at the very least political leanings of them, along with what their news topics are, along with controversies. Um, so, so there is a political side in the choices being made and what we're showing you, but I think they're the moral things. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my slightly long-winded explanation of Invisible Voice. I like the, the plug-in button, which, by the way, I haven't seen it before. That's very fresh, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I wouldn't mind it to, to move it all the time, you know, <laughs> the screen. It's also worth saying, so with the, so a few things being tweaked over the next week or two on this, um, so the plug-in button, for example, you'll be able to throw away and it won't open as you click it, but it will, you'll be able to fling it around the screen, which will just be quite a nice novel thing. Um, 
but this is actually my favorite edition of everything. Recently. Yeah, and the drop down menu, it's the new thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, so you don't have to, so you actually know who these things are because who are these people otherwise? They're not relevant to you. But mm -hmm. now, yeah. Um, yeah, so there will be lots of little tweaks made over the next week that drastically improve not only the information that we're getting and the way of displaying it, um, but also your interface as a user point of view that is a bit more interactive and makes it a bit more engaging. So, so the first edition was like blocking uh, pages and this one here you are counting on responsibility of, uh, of uh, individuals to not use the pages that are against their uh, views not yes but not even so much that they stop using these websites not even so much that you know we're still going to go on amazon we're still going to go on facebook we're still going to go on ebay which the more i've been using invisible voice the more you learn how evil it is um i'm still gonna and realistically we're all going to use these things still but at least it's for me invisible voice is in much in its name it's about being this invisible thing that is just this very slow subtle way of understanding the companies and people behind these these screens and and our products and where all of these things come from we're surrounded all the time by unethical things that but we don't see it through these separations that it's for me invisible it's a slowness it's a slow that maybe after two months of seeing amazon is a bit bad then maybe you do go onto ebay which is slightly less bad and then maybe after five months, you then move on to something else, but only momentarily. It's, it's, it's about empowering you just to make the decision that you think is right. And the convenience of the internet and the convenience of Amazon will always win. You know that, that but it's about the slow, subtle change. I think it's about the slowness. I've explained that quite badly, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's about information. It's about information and getting the right information at the right time. If you're walking into a shop and you're getting told that the cheap labor is being made here and that the, the boss from Ted Baker um, has done terrible sexual misconduct things, which he has, um, then maybe you would choose to go to H&M rather than Ted Baker. That, but slowly, slowly, it's the slowness for me that is the key bit. And one of the key things that we're working on with Invisible Race recently, um, which I should also give a very big shout out and a very big credit um, to someone called Orange, who has been the main, main, main person developing all of the back end of this, the entirety of the back end of this, um, that he is an extremely skillful, talented human being and very kind and loving and very positive, you know, um, that, 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 yeah, big shout out to Orange, also big shout out to Kia Taspegu and Marta Dos Santos for being the people to design it and code it, um, should also be said. Um, yeah, sorry, I got distracted by that. No, no, no. Yeah. Also, thank you, Orange, and uh, great work from the entire team behind the visible voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you just, while we are still this, while you are demonstrating and showing us the, the plugin, uh, yeah, we can download it there on the website, but also we have website. And can you like separate the website and plugin and also this distinction between the phone, how we can use it on phone and the laptop and how we're going to change it in the future? Yeah, so, so yeah, so there's the plugin side, um, which is kind of just always there and will only ever appear when we have information, but also a bit quietly. Um, and then there's the website. So the website is more of an archive of all of the information we have. So at the moment, these are all the companies that we've got listed. Um, there's a search bar at the top, which just from a personal satisfaction point is super quick and super satisfying on how quickly it gets rid of everything. Um, so you type in any company you want and then you see the company and then you'll see all of the information um, that we have based on them. And, and then there's the download plugin, which is really what this is. So it's an archive of the website for all of the information where we're pulling a lot of the information from because it's all stored here. Um, and then there's download plugin. Um, the plugin will be able to be downloaded within the next hour or so um, for Chrome and for Firefox. Um, to download it, you just click on the download button, which currently isn't working, but it will. Um, uh, so you click the download button, then we can we can download a different. So just to show you how to download a plugin, if you don't know how to download a plugin. Um, so the down, click download button would take you to a page that looks exactly like this, um, but not this one. 
but it would look like this. It would just say invisible voice with the logo. You click add to Chrome, you click add extension, and then it's installed. You then close your browser. Oh, there you go, and now it's installed. But for it to really install, you then close your browser, you then reopen your browser, and then it's actually installed. Um, and then it's done. But because I closed my browser, I stopped showing my screen with you. <laughs> um, um, and then it's installed, and then Invisible Voice is working on your computer. And it really is as simple as that. Um, and then in terms of a mobile phone, um, so you're not allowed plugins on mobile phones is the short answer. Yeah. Safari and Chrome don't make it. Um, Yandex, the Russian browser do. Um, so if you really want to use it, you can use it on Yandex and it will work on Yandex. Um, but in reality, it doesn't. So it's just the website and it's just the archive of all of the information that's accessible through the phone. And yeah, that's yeah. it really. We can invite our viewers to later download the plugin and maybe they can leave it in the comment, their opinion, what they think. Because uh, plugin, it's, uh, it's, still a, it's still a beta version. I mean, it's the second phase of it and <clears throat> you still plan to develop it and update it and change it. Maybe. So what's the ultimate invisible voice? How did you... Sorry? Um, what's the ultimate ultimate goal to Invisible Voice? How many phases do we need to go through it? Because, I mean, it's a small team of people who work on it. In, I mean, in, my, amazing, but... yeah, in my eyes, the ultimate aim of Invisible Voice is to have pretty much every website on Invisible Voice. The, so that plugin that only appears when we have, I don't know what's a website, we actually can just use it from here. But, you know, that little button that will only ever appear when we have it, it would be nice if that button is pretty permanently always there. That, you know, even if there isn't information that we can find on the internet based on how we're doing it, there will always be news stories about them, which is always the big one for me, um, you know, on who that company is and how they are. Um, so yeah, the aim is really to have every company essentially in the world listen on visible voice. Um, and to a degree, I think that is possible because of the way automated there is a slightly long process in linking one bit of information with each company um, but maybe as it grows and scales to a degree we start losing that one bit of information and then it really then makes it a totally achievable goal to have every company on it um, but in many ways the real goal in terms of invisible voice not as a plug in itself was really to start making people think about what the internet is and how we can start using the internet as a tool for protest. The invisible voice is just one simple idea that uses the breadth of information that's on the internet. But really, what if web developers started thinking about how we can use it? What if physicists started thinking about how we can use it? What if everyone started thinking about different ways that we can start putting together this incredibly powerful tool of connectivity combined with information, how, how can we use that as a way to fight? How can, we, how can we start fighting big corporations? As much as governments, as much as things that we dislike. You know, there are lots of powerful tools that are disposable that only work when we collectively do anything. It's all about collectively coming together. You know, social shaming is one of the most powerful tools that we have at, just at our disposal, and yet we're still not really utilizing it. You know, we can use it on Twitter in some way, but Twitter hasn't really aggregated it in such a way where it's actually a tool. But if someone were to make a relatively simple seeming on the front end platform where that is aggregated in such a way, then suddenly there's a really powerful thing that we can start coming from the ground up rather than top down to fight with. And that's really the aim of Invisible Voice. And that's really the hope for it. There is the hope for it to cover every website and company in the world, but really the bigger aim of it is for people to start thinking more about how we can use these platforms and create structures and systems where the individual is participating more rather than it being a social media that we're all trying to create. It's trying to create a participatory media where we are all participating. We all have a value within it in kind of a blockchain-esque way, kind of, but also not in many different ways. And that's really the hope. That's really the hope is to inspire a new fight again rather than 
rather than this be the fight itself. Um, that sounds really good. You are also getting uh, um, good wishes and con congratulations from Facebook, uh, from Urshka. <laughs> uh, she has a question. Uh, she would like to know um, how do you choose the website? Uh, if um, are those the ones that are most used by the average consumer? Yeah, so the first, so, as I, so on the moment, at the moment, there's about 600 websites and imminently added are another 3000 websites. Um, the first 600 websites, well, the first block of websites were chosen as the FTSE 100 companies. So the most valuable companies in the world we decided to go for. Um, then after that, it was then going after the top 250 fashion companies. Then after that, it was going for all of the sister companies or parent companies of the companies that we have. So if we've got the top 100 most valuable companies, what other companies do they own? Let's include all of those companies. Of those top 250 fashion companies, what are the sister companies to those or what are the parent companies to those? And of those parent companies, what else do they own? Um, and then after that, it was going for the top 250 most used websites on the internet. Then after that, it was going for um, me specifically going for media websites. Um, so we went for the top thousand most used and visited media websites. Um, and that, that was about where we're at now with the top 3000. Um, and then after this 3000, once again, we're going for parent companies and sister companies of the companies that, so the main way that we expand it is we go in for a block and then we go for parent companies and sister companies of those companies, which then expands it by about a thousand. And then we then go for a new target and the new target will probably be more consumerism, I think, um, in terms of shops as in, you know, like Asda or Walmart or your phone or whatever it is. Um, software companies are also on there. There's a few other companies, um, but also any suggestions anyone has. This is this is totally the first attempt at this. Um, there will be a section on the website where if people suggest websites, they will be added in. Um, that, yeah, so it's first going for big companies, big companies and kind of expanding it out based on size and usership. Um, yeah. What about the, the categories that uh, of information that you offer? So some are uh, the, the same um, um, or some are repeating and or do you um, create new categories, categories by, by the informations you can find or uh, are those fixed no yeah so so no it's any category it's any category we were just going for easy categories first um but like even in terms of the FTSE 100 FTSE 100 as a category is very different to the fashion companies as a category the FTSE 100 will include some fashion companies but it will also mainly include banks whilst fashion will include solely fashion so mm -hmm. the that we were, we're approaching it with categories, but not necessarily categories in a kind of fashion, not in a kind of rigid fixed way. Um, but then even sorting, you can't sort by category, for example, on the website, um, just because that, that ended up being quite surprisingly difficult um, to add in that kind of thing that are even trying to categorize by the information that we have is slightly difficult. Um, that, so, so there's no fixed category at all and it's fully open to whatever category one wants to do um but it's you know it's yeah it's still growing it's still very much so growing and i would really say by the new year is really when it's really beginning the project that there are still definitely things that need to be fixed from a user front there are definitely things that need to be fixed on things that are breaking a little bit um that but yeah yeah, no, and any suggestions are uh, more than welcome. Mm. Uh, yeah, Lily is, uh, I think, uh, I'm guessing that she's uh, suggesting to, um, to add patrons, founders of colleges and universities, probably to the web pages. Uh, and uh, I have another question, maybe, uh, I mean, it all sounds so bad now, so, like we are revealing information that are problematic. Do you have, is there like a white list of, <laughs> of web pages? No, no. And there, this is something Philip and I discussed quite a lot in terms of a white list, a white and black listing of websites and companies that it's important for the individual to make the decision on what is good and bad 
if that's what you mean by it. It's, it, it has to solely be what I say is good, someone else will say is bad, and what they say is bad, I'll say is good. That it's up to you to make that decision on whether you think it's good or bad, and then you make that decision. That so no, there, there we we are mainly admittedly looking for more negative news on companies. Um, but having said that, they're not actually negative news unless the company are doing negative things. That you know we're looking for whether you're paying your taxes, kind of, um, and it will come up if you aren't paying your taxes. Um, but it probably won't come up. We're looking for philanthropy which tends to be a positive thing, mm -hmm. um, but also quite often philanthropy tends to be quite a negative thing. Um, that we're looking for sexual misconduct, we're looking for racial misconduct, we're looking for allegations of anything that you've been up to. Um, we're looking for controversies generally. So, so no, there's not a white list, um, that, but nor is there a black list, is the short answer. It's just yeah. a list of information. But was it hard to narrow down to this list of, uh, not six or a bit more of the tags you showed before about controversies, uh, allegations, uh, slave labor, etc. Yeah. So um, there are a lot of, yeah. Yeah, we had, a, we had a huge list at first. And as I say, that's now that's cheap labor now. And there's a few little tweaks on that which need to be updated. Um, there was a huge list at first. Um, but then what we found was that a lot, the wording became so important because a lot of the time they might sound negative, some of the things, um, but then actually they're used as quite positive, like racial things. There's lots of companies who will boast about being good race about race, but then internally are being super bad. So how, how can you start to filter or start to understand that? Um, there was then also an issue on, even in terms of having a much longer list, um, just, just the sheer number of companies that we want to expand this to searching each company against say 50 tag words repeatedly super quickly thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of time the bandwidth of that is hugely huge um, there is a cost affiliated to that actually um, but the cost is quite small but when it's on such a big scale it's huge um, so, so it became a case of having to narrow it down on a purely pragmatic level as much as having to filter it down on a way that we thought is actually useful to the individual. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of my answers to questions like this will be on a very practical level um, to give you a very honest thing because of the scale we want it to grow to, but also the scale that we are now um, and the costs involved with different things, that there's the hope of it and then there's the reality of it. Um, so there is a donate button, I should say, <laughs> uh, where you can donate via PayPal uh, and all the money obviously goes towards this. Uh, I think I have another question uh, about uh, so um, so obviously you can uh, uh, you will have the information of how many downloads there were of the plugin, uh, but uh, since you don't use uh, it doesn't use any cookies. Uh, I mean, is there any other information that you can get about the um, the yes, use of, of the plugin? No, no. All the only information that we take and gather is how many people have downloaded it. That that is all the information that we have. That um, maybe maybe that it was a conversation that we had at various points on what level can users start inputting into it and whether that comes up or not, and how, how, what is the relationship between the user and invisible voice. Um, but again, Philip and I had a very long conversation about the morality of the project, and, and should we be putting essentially a thumbs up and thumbs down, for example, on websites? Um, and we decided no, because who, it's not up to us to do it. Um, and in much the same way as whether you are having an involvement in the project or not. Um, it's, it's so much based on you. It's so much just based on the individual having this information. And in much the same ways, we're not tracking any information from you. This is just about us providing you with a tool and you choosing to use that tool if and when you want to. Um, it's, it's just trying to be quite invisible. It's just trying to be this invisible thing that sits between you and the company on your screen. The company never know that you're using it. No one ever knows that you're using it. We know that you have it. Uh, we don't know if you're using it, 
And that's as far as it goes, really, in terms of the user and the individual kind of overall. But as I say, we will be adding a bit later on where you're able to suggest websites to be added in. Um, you can email us in the meantime, if you want to, or tweet us or get in touch with Guest Marab or whoever, um, then that can be added in. Um, but that's as far as it is at this moment, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted it. Um, I wanted you to say this uh, again. <laughs> so uh, it's safe to use it. And yeah, no, no cookie. Information about your, your yourself. Why and, it's, and it's not annoying at all. I have it for uh, almost a month, and I don't mind it at all. It doesn't bother me like some other plugins. <laughs> Excellent, which is a key bit. It's a key bit, it's yeah. not annoying. That's the key bit, in fact, yes, the main bit. But yeah, no cookies, no tracking, no nothing. I fought a lot for data privacy over the last five years, including giving away my passwords to everything that I own. Um, you know, the, so, so, I, so, you, so feel free to Google that and trust that if you want kind of a trust side on that, but it's very clear that we aren't tracking anything. Okay, maybe if someone has another question, please, please, now is the time. If not, maybe we can wrap it up slowly. Uh, so you said that uh, the plugin will be uh, available for download in an hour or so. You said that 24 minutes ago, <laughs> 42. Yeah, so the plugin, so yeah, so we uploaded the plugin earlier to Chrome Store and Firefox. It needed approval, it needs approval from Google and Chrome, uh, Google and Firefox mm -hmm. for it to first be used by people. It's doing the approval process now um, and it should be approved within the next, less than an hour now. Um, that the second it is, I will let you guys know, you can let whoever else know, we will update the website so the download plugin button works. Um, as I say, it should be within an hour, let's say, to be safe. Um, but, you know, if you go on in two hours, it, it will be there. Yeah, well, if it's not, we will send another uh, message on Facebook when it's ready. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Ushka is asking if uh, Wikipedia is the only resource uh, platform. No, so the resource, so the list of websites that we're taking information from are these information. Uh, so Wikipedia, Wikidata, Glassdoor.com, Media Bias Fact Check, and Google News. Um, so so we, we at first were looking for lots of websites to be taking information from, um, but then it became a trust thing, that trust is one of the key parts of this project inherently, is that you have to be able to trust the source of information, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, so we were trying to work out what are the most trustworthy sites kind of universally. Um, and Wikipedia, I think, is number one in reality. Um, changing information on Wikipedia is extremely difficult um, to put wrong information into it. It's constantly being checked by hundreds of different thousands of different people. And I think we do all trust Wikipedia. So Wikipedia and Wikidata are the main source of information. Um, and then, yeah, glassdoor.com, media, media bias fact check. Um, which is an important one overall because it's deciding what is the political leaning of each company. Um, and interestingly, you know, some people might say, Facebook, how dare you say that Facebook is a center left political leaning company? Um, you know, media, so one of the main reasons that we decided to use mediabiasfactcheck.com um, is because they explain how they have come to all of their conclusions on their political leanings. And their rationale for choosing that Facebook is a center left leaning company is because they say that they made a few new Facebook accounts, didn't follow anyone, and were just seeing what the stories that they were being given is at given are before it starts tailoring it to you. And they found that 76% were left leaning and only 16% were right leaning. Um, now, of course, as soon as you start to like things that changes it and if we were to ask all a hundred if we were to ask a hundred different people and use their facebook to analyze it it would give totally wrong results because it's so individually based um but i'm just using facebook as an example for this because that is maybe the most controversial one that i've come across 
um, and it's saying it's a centre left leaning thing, but they back up all of their information. So if you're to disagree with any of it, you can see, you can see how they've come to this conclusion. Um, so yeah, the most of the information does come from Wikipedia um, because it's a trust based thing. Um, and we're looking to expand the resource of where we're getting information from. Um, taxes are one of the big ones that I've always wanted. Taxes in many ways is where this kind of was born from a little bit um, in terms of being able to see how much tax each company pay or even just what percentage of tax they are paying on their claimed profits. Or as we want, as it then starts to get harder and harder to find that, um, where a company pays their tax. Can we just show what percentage of corporation tax they're paying? Um, but there's nowhere, no legitimate list, and the keyword being legitimate, no legitimate list on the internet of where companies pay their tax. Now we all know that Facebook pay their tax in Ireland, but you can't legitimately find that. So that isn't included on the Invisible Voice website. And that's the same. And But really one of my biggest angers in this project that I always end up ranting about is the fact that you can't even find out what country companies pay their tax in, let alone how much tax. So of course, of course, nothing is ever gonna change in terms of taxes if you don't even know where companies are paying tax. Um, so there's a lot of lobbying just on a side note going on with lots of charities um, for different governments to change the laws. Um, so maybe that's also one of my biggest hopes from Visible Voice really is that we all start lobbying our MPs to, for, com for countries to start making it law abiding for companies to reveal just that they pay their tax in that country, not even how much tax. Oh, yeah, sorry, that was a slight tangent. Yeah, no, no. but then we also we have a glass door, which I spent a lot of time yesterday. It's also, uh, I was not familiar with it before. So Glassdoor, Glassdoor is, uh, so any employees of a company can go on Glassdoor and rate the company on their and how satisfied they are and write reviews on them. Um, so with us for this, this is just going to be a bit slow, um, but with us on this, um, sorry, my internet is extraordinarily slow these days, and especially now streaming. Um, that's, um, but yeah, so Glassdoor.com is a place where all, not all, some employees can write, give a review, the employment satisfaction out of five, write a review on that company. Um, and yeah, that's what it is. So we're taking that information from it. Um, you can then also go onto Glassdoor.com and see the reviews and see it for yourself. Um, but it seems, it seems exceptionally trustworthy overall. Although, of course, like anything, it is open to abuse a little bit. Um, but because there are lots of people making ratings on this one, there's 174, which isn't loads, but it's still enough. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And as I say, we are looking to add more in. We are looking to add more in, but it's about, first of all, finding trustworthy things. It's first finding what we want to add in. Then it's about it being trustworthy. And then it's about doing the work to then add it in. Just to say, yeah. But it will be expanded. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, we can have another chat in a month or so. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds very good when it's really there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe after when the uh, Invisible Voice 2.0 is done, so maybe we can revisit the Invisible Voice, the first one, because people are gonna be in, uh, informed. Then we're gonna collectively block the pages, and then we're gonna crash the big companies. Maybe I mean people sure. want to do that. So yeah. <laughs> It's true. it's true. It is about expanding. It's about expanding, but it's also about other people expanding. It's about everyone collectively working together on how we expand. You know, it's Invisible Voice. Cool. This didn't actually set out to do what I wanted it to do. Invisible Voice was meant to be a place of protest. This isn't a place of protest. That, so hopefully someone else can work out how one makes a place of protest. And also then monetize it if you want to monetize it and make those money off of it. So, you know, it's a win-win on that front if you want to change the world and make loads of money. <laughs> so, you know, let's work it out. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, finish this. <laughs> <laughs> let's finish this conversation. <laughs> so it was really a pleasure. Um, thank you for um, working with us. It was a joy. We are uh, totally looking forward to uh, seeing the invisible voice uh, developed or seeing you in uh, Maribor. I look forward to both of those things. And thank you very, very much for having me and choosing me. And it was a shame that we had to do this remotely. Um, but I look forward to coming to Maribor. Yeah. Yeah. Get drunk. 
with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, thank you also uh, to the followers uh, um, uh, on Facebook um, and have a nice evening. Thank you, Mila, for being us. And <laughs> we will keep posting uh, all the updates and information about the Invisible Voice Yeah, in the future on our web page. So, Amazing. Yeah. So I follow us through Maripo if you don't already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and thanks to the whole of your team there behind. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Hi there. Thank you again to Orange, Kia, and Matt. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Ciao.